So here's another exercise for you. See if you can figure out if these molecules are enantiomers or if they are the same. So press pause, work on this by yourself, and when you're ready, press play. All right, so what we're gonna do is we did in previous examples is number one, you wanna check the connectivity of each of these two molecules. Make sure they've got the same connectivity. So and only an, you know, enantiomers will always have the same connectivity. The second thing is you wanna check RS for all stereocenters. And so we'll do each of these two things in turn, and then we'll be able to tell if we have enantiomers or not. All right, so first of all, do the molecules have the same connectivity? Let's look at this molecule on the left. Notice we've got this carbon in the middle, attached to OH, H, and we've got CH, CH32, and a CH3. And this is also attached to OH, H, CH3, CH, CH32, and CH3. So Connectivity in both cases is the same. These are not constitutional isomers. They could be enantiomers. They could be enantiomers. Okay, let's have a closer look. So let's figure out R and S for e, all stereocenters. And to figure out R and S, of course, we need to figure out the different uh, priorities of each of the different functional groups. So, or the different groups that are attached to the central stereocenter. Hopefully you can see that this carbon I put a blue next to is a stereocenter. So we've got four atoms attached to this carbon. We've got O, we've got uh, C, C, and H. So priority number one will be oxygen. Priority number four will be hydrogen. And then we've got, if we redraw everything, we've got C, H, CH3, CH3. And if we expand this out a little bit more, see that we've got, uh, we've got to break the tie here between these two carbon atoms. So the carbon atom over here, CH3, it's attached to H, H and H, the three atoms it's attached to. And this one over here is attached to C, C and H. Okay, so that should make this priority number two, C, C and H beats H, H and H. So, okay, now we've got a little dilemma here. Normally we want to put our fourth ranked group in the back. So in other words, we want it to be a dash. Here it's in the plane of the page. So in order to be able to tell if this is R or S, there's two things you can do. You can, uh, if you've got very good spatial skills or if you have a model, you can imagine what it looks like for your eye and let me, make a better drawing of the eye here, um, for your eye to look at it from this perspective. So imagine what it looked like if you're going this way. What would you see if this priority of group number four would be in the back? Uh, what would be on your, uh, so if this eye is in the plane of the page, your OH would be up like that. Your CH3 to H here, so the isopropyl in other words, would be on your right. And your CH3, CH3 here, which is a dash, would be on your left, like that. That's what you would see, and the hydrogen would be in the back. And knowing that, then you'd go from priorities one, two, and three, it would be like this, it would see as R. So that's one way of figuring out this is R. The other way to do it is to rotate these. You can rotate any three groups. If you interchange any three groups, you will have done a bond rotation. So the other way to do it would be to take, uh, let's say, hydrogen, CH3, and isopropyl. If you put hydrogen, let's say, where CH3 is, CH3 where isopropyl is, and isopropyl where the hydrogen is, if you redrew that, you would get this. So hydrogen goes where the CH3 is. Hydrogen would then go in the back. CH3 would go where the isopropyl is. So it goes here in the front. 
and isopropyl goes where the hydrogen is, so isopropyl CH3, CH3, and then figure out um, R and S from there, so priority one, two, and three, and notice that still gives us S. So this is, de um, sorry, R. So it still gives us R, so clockwise R. Okay, so that's definitely R. Uh, we can do the same thing uh, in terms of rotating for this molecule on the right. Again, we've got a situation where hydrogen's in the plane of the page, and maybe this time we'll do a, a slightly different method. We'll do the second method this time. So first of all, you need to figure out the priorities of each of the atoms, so oxygen's number one. Hydrogen would be number four. Uh, isopropyl would be number two, and CH3 would be number three. So maybe let's do another bond rotation here. We want to put hydrogen again in the back. So we want to make hydrogen into hydrogen where the CH3 is, so, so that hydrogen can be a dash. And again, if we interchange any three groups, it doesn't really matter which three, we will do a bond rotation. So let's interchange CH3 with isopropyl. And that means that we have to uh, interchange isopropyl with hydrogen. And if we do that, so we're basically doing this bond rotation here. We're putting hydrogen here, CH3 here, and isopropyl is going there. Okay. So if that's the case, then what do we have? Well, we've got, so H is going where the CH3 is. So CH3 is going, uh, hydrogen's going in the back. CH3 is going where the isopropyl is. So it's going there. And isopropyl is going where the hydrogen is. So CH3, 2. The OH stays the same. So it stays the same. It doesn't change. Okay, so that gives us 1, 2, and 3. So that shows that we're going, you can tell, we're going counterclockwise and hydrogens in the back so this is S. So this stereo center here is S. So they're opposite. R and S are opposite for these two examples. Since they're opposite then and the connectivity is the same then they must be enantiomers. Okay, they're opposite and connectivity is the same, they must be enantiomers. Uh, there's a situation where we have more than one stereo center. We have to worry about the possibility for meso compounds, but that doesn't really come into play here. So these two molecules are enantiomers.